asking him various questions. Y los mantras se cantan de forma monótona. Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shyam and welcome. Namaste Guru Devaya Sarvasiddhi Pradayine Sarvamagala Rupaya Sarvananda Vidyajine Jai Guru Shri Guru Jai Guru Shri Guru Jai Guru Shri Guru Two episodes revealing on Jiva Tattva Studying here with you all this wonderful book in Vaikuntha Not Even the Leaves Fell And now we get into the chapter 2, more from the te teachings of Srila Bhaktivinod. The following pages are showing how Bhaktivinod Thakur truly understood Jiva Tattva. What is Jiva Tattva? How the Jiva, after all, get into this reality, this samsara? karma, what is happening? In the previous two episodes we realized, we discovered that jiva, jivas are of different kind and the kind of jiva that we are, we are the jivas who are in sansara, they have been from no beginning will not end inside this material realm and in relation to the karma. Every action produces a reaction, therefore Every jiva must to encounter its own karma, his karma, her karma. And on the words of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, based on his own writings, we realize that Bhaktivinoda Thakur in no place is a statement something, state, is doing some statement related to jiva coming from Vaikuntha as a fell down downgrade of platform, realm, world. This is not happening. This is not part of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's philosophy. So now we are reading chapter 2, more from the teachings of Srila Bhaktivinoda. In the first chapter, we mentioned that Srila Bhaktivinoda gave a novel explanation of the word Anadi. Anadi means without a beginning or endlessness. In Jaiva Dharma, chapter 16, Bhaktivinoda Thakur defines the meaning of anadi karma. The root of all karma is the desire to act, and that has its root in avidya. Avidya translates as ignorance. To forget that I am the servant of Krishna is avidya. This avidya is not born in material time, it arises in the Tatasta region. Therefore, karma has no beginning in material time. For this reason, karma is called anadi. Hmm? Some people take this definition of anadi as an indication of the fell down of the jiva, thinking that if karma did not begin in material time, it must begin in spiritual time. But this is impossible. It surely cannot have a beginning in spiritual time because according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur every event in the spiritual world is eternal chapter 15 shit jagatera kala akanda rupe nitya bartamana furthermore in the spiritual world material time is conspicuous by its absence as Srila Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati writes Brahma Samhita 56 I worship that transcendental seat known as Svetadvipa, where there is eternal existence of transcendental time, who is ever present and without past or future, and hence it is, is not subject to the quality of passing away, even for the duration of a half moment. If karma had a beginning in the spiritual world, it will never come to an end. But all Vedic philosophers agree that karma comes to an end at the point of liberation. Therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur say that avidya, the root cause of karma, arose at the 
Tasta region, not in Baikunta. We leave it to the sagacious reader to figure it out the whereabouts of the Tatasta region. In any case, it is not by Kunta. So based on Bhaktivino Thakur's, and I do believe this based on Shastras, karma started in Tatasta sh uh, Shakti, in the area of Tatasta. Does it mean that? It means that when the Jiva is about to choose where to go because it's has its own consciousness and independence, free will. So in the time that it takes the resolution, the jiva takes the resolution to go to the material realm, to the Mahamaya, and that very moment karma starts for the jiva. And the jiva goes inside material realm, but let's be clear, the Tatasta Chakti is not exactly the spiritual world, has nothing to do with the spiritual world. Speaking, it's not Vaikuntha, it's not Golok, it's not any spiritual planet or platform. All right? Tatasta Chakti is not that. It's not the spiritual world, but it's previous to this material realm. And again, it does not mean the Tatasta Shakti moment of karma creation by the Jiva is the spiritual world. It is not. Jiva has not been there in the spiritual world yet. It's just there in the Tatasta Shakti taking decision of action. And the action for Jivas like us is to go to material world. So there all the spiral of karma start developing. But as it start developing the karma of the particular jiva, the particular jiva will come to an end of its own karma, will finish its own karma when it take mukti. So mukti, liberation. In that moment, karma ends. If the karma will come from the spiritual realm, then the karma will never end. Therefore, the jiva will be forever doomed to the miseries of material reality, material life. The point is that karma has no beginning either in spiritual time or material time. Hence, it is rightly called anadi, beginningless. Whether you say it has no beginning in material time and or it has not beginning, it means the same thing. Material conditioning cannot have a beginning in spiritual time that is self-contradictory. If conditioned life had its beginning in the spiritual world or spiritual time, then the jiva will never be able to attain liberation because, because its karma will be will then be eternal. So what the same I am saying, if the karma will come from Golok to say to fell down with the jiva, that karma will be eternal because everything in Golok is eternal. Otherwise Krishna will not be eternal, who is the king of Golok. Radha will not be eternal because it's the queen of Golok. Simple, clear. Moreover, there is no possibility of material conditioning outside material time because Maya exists only within material time. We are here speaking about the Maya from the conception of illusion and material realm. Material world also can be called Mahamaya. There is two kinds of Maya. Basically, Mahamaya is the big big, huge, enormous expansion in, on the material realm, material reality, material world, that counts all the yugas, multiverse, universes, planets, stars, that are almost infinite. And there is the yoga maya. Mm -hmm. Many people have this confusion that maya, Mahamaya is the, is the spiritual maya, but no, yoga maya is the reality in this material, in the, sorry, in this spiritual world. Is the spirit and consciousness material reality? Sorry, again, is the consciousness and spiritual reality? This is yoga maya. Yoga maya is what creates the relation and the connection between everything existing on the spiritual realm. And Mahamaya is the same, but for the material realm. Spiritual realm, Yoga Maya, 
material realm Mahamaya. So, if it has no beginning in material time and no beginning in spiritual time, it is beginningless anati. This is the base of karma. Therefore, the meaning of anadi given by Bhaktivinoda Thakur is the same as used by our other Acharyas, such as Srila Jiva Goswami Bhaktivinoda Thakur has apparently just stated the case in a slightly different way. This is evident from his comment on Srimad Bhagavatam 11.12.21 in Bhagavat Ar Arka Marichi Mala 8.31 Bhagavan kahile na he udhava e samasti biasti svarupa bisvai anadi samsara taru. The Lord said, O Udhava, this universe which is in the form of individual and aggregate entities is the beginningless universal tree. This universe is the beginningless universal tree. Here the material bodies of the conditioned living entities as well as the aggregate universal body are compared to Samsara Taru Purana. The important point is that the word Anadi is used both for the individual tree as well as the aggregate tree, the universe. If the individual tree is not accepted as beginningless, then the universal tree is not accepted as beginningless. That means once there was no material nature, but this is unacceptable because the Lord said in Bhagavad Gita 13.20 that both the material nature and the living entity are beginningless, anadi. The beginningless event is undergoing a beginningless cycle of creation and annihilation. As he further writes, A. Taru Karma Pravaha Maya. This tree is undergoing a flow of a flow of or cycle of karma. Srila Vishvanata Chakravarti Thakur, commenting on the same Bhagavat, Bhagavatam verse 11, 12, 21, says, Puranaha Anadihi. Purana means beginningless. The popular meaning of the word Purana is old or ancient, yet both Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur translate it as Anadi. Purana is beginningless, synonym of Anadi, Purana. If Bhaktivinoda Thakur had any other meaning of Anadi in his mind, he could have written it as a more traditional synonym of Purana instead of Anadi. Therefore, the only meaning of the word anadi, as used by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, is beginningless. His attempt to explain anadi differently in Jaiva Dharma and other works was on account of the audience he had to preach to in his time. This discourse in the second way of this book. This is discussed in the second way of this book. If someone still has doubt about the truth of no fall from Vaikuntha and that the conditioning of the Jiva is Anadi with not prior state, then Bhaktivinoda Thakur further writes Jaiva Dharma chapter 17. There are two types of Jivas deliberate from Maya, Nitya Mukta, eternally liberated, and Badha Mukta, those who were bound but become liberated. The jivas who were never bound by Maya are called Nitya Mukta. The Nitya Muktas are also of two types, Ashvarya Gata Nitya Mukta and Madhurya Gata Nitya Mukta. The former are the associates of Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha and are the atomic particles from Mula Sankarshan. The latter are the associates of Lord Krishna in Golok. They are the atomic particles of Sri Baladev situates in Golok Vrindavan. In this description of Nitya Muktas, he does not count the jivas bound in the material world who came from Mahavishnu. So Nitya Mukta are of two kinds, two types, Ashvarya Gata Nitya Mukta and 
Madhurya Gata Nitya Murta. And the third kind of jivas are the kind of jivas that are inside the material world like us. And these are not Nitya Muktas and we are no expansion of Sri Baladev in Golok. We are not expansion of Sankarshan in Vaikuntha, but we are expansion from Mahavishnu. After this, he describes the three classes of Bada Muktas, or those who were bound and became liberated. Nowhere does he mention a class called Mukta Bada, or those who were liberated and became bound, or the ones who came from Vaikuntha or Golok and fell down to material real realm. There is no mention on this. Therefore, it is conclusive that he does not support the theory of fell down from Vaikuntha. In the Bhagavad Archa Marichi Mala 8.37, in the chapter Vata Jiva Lakshanam, characteristics of a bound jiva. Commenting on Bhagavatam 11.11.7, he writes, The bird which eats the pipala, fruit, is in ignorance, therefore he is in nityapata, or bound eternally. The bird which does not eat the pipala, fruit, is full of knowledge, and therefore he is nityamukta, or eternally liberated. Here he applies the adjective nitya to both the conditioned souls as well as to the super soul, who is never conditioned. Therefore, nitya cannot have any other meaning but to mean ever bound in the cause of the jiva and ever liberated in the cause in the case of the super soul. To give it a different meaning in the same sentence will be considered a defect. Consequently, consequently no conditioned soul was formerly a Nitya Mukta, resident of Vaikuntha. No conditioned soul was formerly a Nitya Mukta, resident of Vaikuntha. No, no. These evidences present from Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writings are from the parts where he is directly explaining the conditioning of the jiva. Therefore, this is the Mukya Vritti or, or primary statement. Taking this understanding as divine, one should then try to understand his other statements wherein he says that the jiva has forgotten Krishna and therefore he is covered by Maya. The fall by the bodies, fall bodies, cite such statements while completely ignoring the primary statements in the Takura's writings. They only cite statements which talk about regaining Svarupa, remembering again, and so on and then interpret them as a proof of fell from Vaikuntha. But the fact remains that nowhere does Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur write that the jiva can fell or fall from Vaikuntha. Rather, he ex explicitly states that Nitya Mukta Jiva has no contact or knowledge of Maya. They are strong by the Shakti of Maya which means that even if they have no descent into the material, which means that even if they have to descend into the material world, they will not be covered by Maya. They are always engaged in the blissful service of the Lord. They never experience material miseries. The jivas forgetful of Krishna has no beginning and actually it means forgetting that one's constitutional position is to be the servant of Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes Sri Chaitanya Shikshastakam Pratama Brishti, fourth shower. Because the jiva is bound before entering the material world, his bondage, bondage is called anadi or beginningless. The jiva who is under the influence of Maya forgets Krishna and seeks to fulfill various desires. The jiva who is atomic consciousness is naturally the servant of Krishna, who is the complete consciousness. Servitorship to Krishna is the 
very identity of the jiva. For getting this eternal nature, the jiva is bound by maya. But as soon as he remembers his eternal nature, he becomes free from maya. The two points to be noted from this are the forgetfulness of Krishna has no beginning and forgetfulness of Krishna actually means ignorance of one's own eternal nature. Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami confirms this in his purport on the famous Krishna Bully verse. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 20.117 Purport When the living entity forgets his constitutional position as an external, as an eternal servant of Krishna, he is immediately entrapped by the illusory external energy. Although the verse says Krishna Bhuli, forgetting Krishna, Srila Prabhupada explains it as forgetting his constitutional position. Srila Bhaktivinot, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, in his Vibriti commentary of Bhagavatam 2.9.35, says that forgetfulness is indirect. Vyati reka buddhi te krishna vishmarana gate. It means that because the jiva is not engaged in the service of the Lord, he is said to be in a forgetful state. Not that he knew Krishna and then forgot him. This is in harmony with the words of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and leave no scope to the fell down theory. Thus, from the direct statement of Bhaktivinoda Thakur as well as by analysis, analy analysis of his indirect statements such as forgetting Krishna, it is clear that the conditioned souls did not fail from Vaikuntha, the jiva being the eternal servant of the Lord does not necessarily imply that he has been in personal touch with Krishna. Mayavadi is a ser May sorry, Maya Devi is a servant of Krishna, but she never associates with him. At this point, I want to make a example regarding to Tatasta conception, Tatasta Shakti consciousness of the Jiva who forgot his real meaning for what Jiva exists, that is Krishna Seva. But instead of that, it's looking for its own Seva, right? To go to material world to enjoy itself. Now there are two things interesting here because from one side, Tatastra Shakti is, yes, it's energy, yes, it's pure energy, power energy. But Tatastra Shakti is, to say, like a river that is between the material realm and the spiritual realm. So this Tatastra Shakti separates both realms, both worlds, make a separation. So Jiva started in Tatastra Shakti, so Jiva has the chance to go to the spiritual realm or to came to the material realm, right? Jiva normally takes by grant the material realm is the original place where the Jiva must be. Therefore, forgetting its real meaning that is serve Radha and Krishna on this, inside the spiritual realm, Jiva goes to the material platform. Similar thing happens with the Brahma body or Maya body philosophy. They are in touch with the supreme energy, yes, the Parabrahman, but in that supreme energy they forget that Krishna is the final destination and they get entrapped in this supreme energy, the Brahman. Now, Brahman, of course, is Krishna, but it's not Bhagavan, it's the Parabrahman, it's the external energy of Bhagavan. What do we get today? First of all, Jivas are of three kinds. One are the Jivas who had the spiritual nature of Aishvarya and they serve Lord Narayan on Vaikuntas. And then are the Madhurya Jivas, the Jivas who have the higher sweetness and Rasvav. Then they go to serve Krishna in 
Nitya Lila Vrindavan, so also called Golok Vrindavan. And there is a third kind of Jiva who has none of these two natures and is the Jiva who accepts the material realm to enjoy itself creating karma out of its ignorance, avidya. And this karma is beginningless. This material realm, sorry, this material realm is beginningless because it's always moving and changing, as I explained in the previous episode. But the karma has a beginning in the moment that Jiva accepts to go to material realm. It, there, the, be, the beginning of the karma of that particular Jiva starts. But that karma can be dissolute, can be destroyed, can be erased from the Jiva's path when Jiva takes on the yoga process. For our case, as Gaudijas, the bhakti yoga process, the bhakti. And in, in some moments, that karma will be destroyed. The dissolution of, of karma is coming and Jiva get mukti, liberated. So these are the three Jivas that we study, we study today. I know that the concept is very, very difficult to understand. Mm. Even for me, now, while doing the reading, I, I realized that, yes, this concept, this understanding is very difficult to explain even, because we are using material words, material words, material mind, intelligence, in order to explain something that is the very tattva of the spiritual energy. So, Yoga Maya, Maha Maya, Jiva Tattva is so big and profound that it's not easy even to explain what to say to start understanding it. I see why it's so difficult topic and many has so big confusion. And of course, this confusion creates some gap in the Shraddha of the practitioners, followers of Bhaktivedanta Swami. Of course, Bhaktivedanta Swami say one thing and then we realize by Chastra and by the previous Acharyas of the same line of Bhakti, uh, Bhakti, uh, Swami Bhaktivedanta they, that they do not support this fell from Vaikuntha. So, of course, there is a faith, a Shraddha noise. This is called cognitive noise. Noise that get into your mind since something is wrong and you realize something is wrong. So, there is the big topic here but as i always say we must do first taking con consideration the shastras what the shastras are explaining then what the purva acharyas are explaining and then if that is in line with my guru then my guru bani is perfect but guru also can has actually many gurus has many flows and Everybody can spot that. Many gurus can have some fail on, on the understanding on the philosophy, right? So, in order to really understand what is what, we must go to the Purvacharyas. Purvacharyas means six of Swamis of Vrindavan, the luminaries of Gaudiya, Krishna Das Kaviraj, uh, to, to count, to say some, some, some name, and the Shastras, what the Shastras are saying, what the texts are saying. This is first, this is the Brahmana, and after the interpretation of Guru, if he interpretates something, there is secondary. So this is the main thing. Since the three readings that we have been doing, the three videos, since that Swami Bhaktivedanta kind of jump from one point of view to the other point of view, is kind of adapting the, the story through the readings. Have, did you notice that? Yeah. So, yeah, this is basically because of this concept of preaching and adapting the things to make it understandable for the people. On a very beginning stage, you cannot put all the tattva in front of somebody who is not prepared, who has no idea. Basically, yes, you came from the spiritual world, you are a spiritual entity, so do a spiritual life because this is your real nature. Eat prasad, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. That's all the point. And, but the problem is Gaudiya Vaishnavism doesn't end there. It's much more deep and profound. So I think after 40 or 30 years of this idea of Sunday feast devotees, 
maybe it's time to start going deeper, start really understanding the philosophy and doing proper bhajan. Proper bhajan means Japa Hare Krishna, Shant Laud, Harinam. Study Granta, study Shastra, study the books, writings of the Purva Acharyas, the perfect Acharyas of Gaudiya. And then you will get to the higher level. From Kanishta Dikari, my father is the best, my father is stronger, my mother is the most beautiful mother of all the mothers. My father is the strongest, um, best father of all the fathers. My papa is better than your papa. My mama is better mama than your mama. This, this Kanishta Dikari fighting, that Swami Prabhupada is the only true, or this guru is the only true, or that guru is the only true. We must to really leave it. This doesn't help in anything, as we have seen. Doesn't help to grow up. Madhyam Adhikari understand gurus are expansion of Nitai, they are helping in the way they can. Some gurus are siddhas, some other gurus are just preachers. They are all helping. But the real truth is in the Granta and the Purvacharyas. This is the only supreme truth. Pramana of this, I always quote Pramana, otherwise is everything coming from my mind. Manamuka, I speak from my mind. I never speak from my mind. I everything that I speak is based on the Grantas, Shastras, and the writings, instruction of the Purvacharyas. Who said this? Srila Rupa Goswami Pat. When Srila Rupa Goswami Pat gave initiation to Jiva Goswami, he said, From today on, you accept as only Guru, the unique Guru, the only Guru. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Sri Rupa Goswami Pad himself said the only Guru Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. What he said is the Pramana and is the final truth. Period. He is Bhagavan. See, he is Swayam Bhagavan. Not me, no nobody else. Follow exactly what Gauranga said. And what Gauranga said is writing down on Shaitanya Charitamrita, Shaitanya Bhagavata, mainly. There are other biographies, other uh, works on Gauranga Mahaprabhu as Shaitanya Chandramrita. But these grantas are the real philosophy of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So, read them, check what he chant out loud as Kirtan, check what he did with Mahamantra, check his behavior, his explanation to his disciple, you will get the truth. It's very easy. It's very easy actually to understand what is what. Go to the Shastras. Don't read the translations. Read the real thing get the translation, compare with the words, word by word, and you will realize what is what, what is not. Because many times translations and purports are created in order to fit to a particular philosophy of a particular line. They want to make the philosophy fit inside their business. And this, in my opinion, is wrong. We must to get it crystal clear, pure as milk. Jai Jai Shri Radesha Mahavira Radha Ramana Ki Jai Jai Nitai Jai Ho Jai Jai Shri Radesha Vajyo Nitai Gaura Radha Sham Japo Hare Krishna Hare Dham Vajyo Nitai Gaura Radha Sham Japo Hare Krishna Hare Dham Jai Mahavira Radha Ramana Jai Nitai Jai Gaur Jai Jai Shri Radesha Mahavira